I went to the place of prayer and while I was praying as I heard the word freedom I was meditating Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. Breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord. breathe upon my life. There's a contention in the realms. The realm was supposed to be secluded and kept under the government of God because when God created this realm, he handed this realm over to Adam. So Adam was the Lord over the earth realm, over the visible realm. In Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26 and 28, when God wanted to embark on the project of man, and of course you all know here that there have been many projects. There are many things God, many projects God have executed in ages past. When you get into the heavens and you see the creatures that are there, you will know man is the youngest of God's creation. A study of the book of Revelation chapter 4 and chapter 5 will open your understanding to some of the ancient things that happened before time itself began in the eternities of God. Certain creation enterprises were carried out and civilizations were formed. Governing systems were established and divine orders and protocols were instituted. And so on the strength of that, we saw the legislators that represented those ages and those creations that were working with God before it became necessary for man to be created. And so when John was carried to heaven, he saw 24 thrones. And on those thrones, he said, there were seated 24 elders. And so before man was created, the civilizations of God is already ancient. That some of the creatures that have worked with God from eternity past, have already taken upon themselves the designation of elders. Now the question you ask yourself is, if eternity is not a realm governed with time, what is the credential of becoming an elder? Because you are not walking in a realm that is governed by Kronos. There's no time reference in that realm. The realm eternal is a realm that is governed by the presence, the life, and the glory of God. So what makes a creature become an elder? When you study 1 Timothy chapter 3 from verse 1, you will know that eldership has to do with character alignment. And so these creatures are the creatures that mirror God the most. So when you look upon them, their dimensions are an effulgence of the essence of God. And so their age is not in time, it's in light. Now when you are done with those elders, you will still find other entities. Because why John was weeping? Because he saw the, 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 the outcome of the human race. And he saw there was no hope for man. And he began to weep in heaven. And he said, a strong angel spoke to him and said, weep not. So after the elders, there are other angels that are called strong. Now what is the credential for strength in the spirit? So there are many creatures in Zion. And Paul, being a wise master builder, an architect of the spirit realm, decided to give us the strata of the spirit realm. And so in Colossians chapter 1 from verse 15, when Paul began to speak, he said, Jesus is the first because all things derive from him. And then after Jesus, he began to give us spiritual stratification. And the first thing he said was, they are thrones. That's why you see the 20 and 4 elders are recognized by the thrones they sit on. Because the highest rank in the realm of God is the rank of thrones. And only elders sit on thrones. Then when you are done with thrones, you now have what you call dominions. When you are done with dominions, you have what is called principalities. When you are done with principalities, then you have what is called powers. Then you have angels. Paul was the one giving us this strata in the spirit. So elders are occupants of thrones in the spirit. They co-rule with God. They are part of the legislative council of the spirit realm. And so when God wants to embark on a project, he can consult with the elders and tell them, this is what I have in mind. What do you think about it? This is why in the book of Job, the Bible said, when God created the earth, he said the sons of God sank into creation. Because of the authority they have with God, they've been given the privilege by God to participate in the enterprises of God as touching his agenda. But when you leave the elders, you now come to the dominions. The dominions are beings that God allocate his civilizations, his programs, and his realms to. And so why an elder is an occupant of a throne, a dominion is a possessor of a realm. 
And so when God created Adam in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, he said, let them have dominion. So what God was doing was to, to, to establish Adam as one of the ranking princes in Zion. And what will give Adam the credential to participate among the princes in light is for him to become a possessor of a realm of God. And so the earth realm, earth realm was wielded to Adam. And after the dominions who have the principalities, the principalities are the functionaries that are sent. So when God wants to conquer, he sends principalities. Because the word principality means first in rank. So they come first into a territory. They are like the ecclesia of the spiritual. And then you have the powers. The powers are the ones who come to establish the will of God in a territory that the principality has conquered. Now, the point I'm trying to make is this. When the earth realm was wielded to Adam, Adam was supposed to be the only lord of the earth realm. But unfortunately, he didn't realize that what he was doing was part of an ancient civilization. There is a government in the spirit that extends into the visible realm. And he was saddled with the responsibility of representing that realm on behalf of God. And so another dominion that lost his place in Zion came into the garden in the guise of a serpent. And he began to, be, to, to trade power with Adam. He found a loophole in his soul and traded on the strength of his lust. And when Adam did not realize the, 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 the essence of his operation in the garden, he decided to sell the earth realm for his appetite. And so from that day onwards, the earth no longer had one lord. In fact, in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 3, the devil was called the god of this world. And so because the devil has become the god of this world, there's a contention about the will of the spirit that will find expression. And so while God is trying to find expression on the earth realm to establish his dominion, there's another creature that has collected the authority of Adam and is also establishing a parallel government. And so when God begins to give us prophetic insight into what, into what he wants to do, he also gives us insight into what the Lord of the parallel government is doing. So we can be fortified with discernment in order to know how to order our step in a world that is, is, there is contention between spirits. The things that happen in the natural realm is a product of the politics of the spirit realm. There are princes in light contending to establish the dominion of Abba. And there are other princes in darkness also trying to establish the dominion of the new God of this world. And so why God is giving us a word for this year is to help shield us from all of the invasive strategies of the dominion in darkness. Because if this prophetic word does not come, we will be without a covering. We will become porous because we are not the only beings here. Every time you say thy kingdom come, it's a declaration of war. Because another spirit is establishing another kingdom. And so if you don't want to become vulnerable, you need to carry prophetic walls. Prophetic walls becomes the insurance system of the spirit that keeps you advancing the agenda of God, the devil's presence notwithstanding. And so when God told us it's a year of establishment, we are also aware that the devil is doing something. Because there are many laws on the earth realm. There are many wills, there are many policies, there are many protocols, there are many agenda that are being targeted to be fulfilled on the earth realm. And so for a man to fulfill God's agenda on the earth, he needs a prophetic word. So the idea of the prophetic word is not a church tradition. The idea of the prophetic word is a covering system that God creates for different tribes in the kingdom because of the unique assignment he gave to those tribes. There are persons who think that the New Year word should be the same in all churches. No, it can't be the same. We don't have the same agenda. We are going out to win souls. And so we are going to be invading different territories. There's another tribe in the spirit that God will tell them not to go out, but to sit in the tent and establish people. The guy who is going out needs a different weapon from the guy who is in the tent. And so the word God will give the guy who is going out will be different from the word God is giving the one who will sit in the tent. This is why the New Year messages are not the same. It's not because we are not hearing from God. It's because our assignments are different. And so the words we require for covering will be different. In Psalm 107 verse 20, he said he sent his word and he healed them and he delivered them from all oppression because there will be activities of darkness and as we begin to approach the end of the age, this activity will be intensified. And because this activity will be intensified, you cannot go forward without a prophetic word. In Galatians 1 verse 4, the Bible calls this age an evil age. This age is an evil age. In Psalm 74 verse 20, he said the dark places of the earth 
are the dwellings of the habitations of cruelty. And so there is cruelty in the dark places of the earth. And then you ask yourself, where are the dark places of the earth? You would think it's a packet of different locations. No. Isaiah 60 verse 1 said, the whole earth will be covered with darkness. And it's a gross darkness will cover the people. So everywhere on earth is the habitation of cruelty. The reason you will excel is because you have a world that has become a light. Because the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. And so the idea of the prophetic word is to give you an insurance as you walk through the year. So you need to have the consciousness requirement and you also need to have the obedience requirement for the words to speak for you.